How do I tell if a source is reputable? Hi everyone, Leo Notenboom here for askleo.com. This is a question I get often, mostly because I very frequently recommend that people go out and look for and only trust reputable sources, sites, uh, sources of information, sites for downloads, software vendors that are reputable. What does it mean to be reputable? Well, I wanna go over some of the aspects or some of the things that I look for whenever I'm using that term. One of the most important, to me at least, is what I would call my prior experience. I'm very likely to return to a site or a source or a store with which I've had a good experience before. It's kind of moot when this question comes up because you already know the places you've already done business with and already trust. Those are reputable to you. So it's not really an issue. The real question is, what if you're looking at something that you have never been to or something you've never looked for before, and you're now coming into contact with sources that you haven't come into contact with before? One of the places that I frequently send people is to the people they trust. In other words, trust by proxy, right? If you have a friend or you have an online source, like maybe Ask Leo, that you already trust, find out if they trust or who they trust for the source of whatever it is you're looking for. That trust by proxy, as I call it, is probably one of the most valuable things you have available to you. These are places, again, depending on who it is you actually trust in the first place, these are places that have the experience or have the resources or have done the research to determine what is and what is not trustworthy for others. When that fails, one of the things that I fall back on are just reputable brands. If I run into brands of computers, for example, or software or whatever I might be encountering that I've never heard of before, at a minimum, at a minimum, that means I'm going to do some additional research to find out who the heck they are. Generally, it means, though, that instead what I will do is prefer a brand I know over a brand I've never heard of. Computers, desktop computers are a great example. I personally have had a lot of good experience with Dell computers, so I'm very likely to choose them over a brand that I've never heard of when I run into it in a big box store. It's not unusual at all for big box stores, for discount stores or whatever, to actually have cheaper computers, but they're of brands you've never heard of, brands that I've never heard of. They may be great. They honestly may be great. I just have no way to tell, at least not on the surface. And given something that I know, a brand I recognize, versus a brand that I don't, well, that's another factor that can help make the decision. Another, of course, is online reputation. This gets a little hard sometimes to determine. For example, like I said earlier, I trust Dell. On the other hand, if you do a search on Dell's reputation, you'll find that a lot of people have had bad experiences. I don't want to discount that. That's important stuff to be aware of. One of the things that you also need to be aware of, though, is that no company is going to be perfect. Nobody is going to have a perfect or perfectly stellar reputation. What that means, though, that is then if you go and look online for feedback, for information in forums, for ratings that you find in online stores, you need to take them with a pinch of salt. Heck, you need to take them with a bag of salt, both pro and con. The cons may very well be people who have had bad experiences. They could be well outnumbered by the people that have good experiences. Unfortunately, it's hard sometimes to trust all of the good experiences as well, simply because it has been known for people to go out and pad the number of good reviews that might be present on some of these sites. So it's important to go through those reviews and not just do the count, but actually read them and make sure that they honestly make sense, that they're honestly describing the product that you're considering and that they're actually giving you some tangible feedback that shows that yes, they did indeed use or experience whatever it was that you're looking at and they had a good or bad experience with it. But online reviews are one of the places that I often go to if I don't know the brand, if it's from a place I've never heard of, that's my next stop. Again, I have to reiterate, perfection doesn't exist. It just doesn't. 
for any brand, no matter how good you may think of it yourself, you will find negative reviews. Stuff happens. Any number of things happen, especially when stuff happens, though, also pay attention to how the company responds. Do they try to bury it? Do they ignore it? I've stopped recommending certain software, not because their software is bad, but because the customer service was so non-existent. Their reaction to questions and problems just wasn't there. That's not a good user experience. That's something else you want to look for is how do these places respond to the problems that will inevitably crop up no matter who they are. There is one last thing I want to caution you against using, and that's price. Price isn't everything. I get that it's important. I get that you've got a budget, but the downside of using price as perhaps the most important factor when you're making some of these decisions about who and who is not reputable is that you may find a cheaper whatever may cost you more in the long run. It may be more trouble. It may be more problems. It may cost you more money later on to fix whatever it is was broken. It's often worth understanding and investing up front in better quality, better reputation than taking a chance on a cheaper whatever it is that you've never heard of. I hope that helps. I hope that gives you a few guidelines to consider when you're trying to decide who is and is not reputable. For the original article on which this video was based, which includes some more details, it includes related links, comments, and more, visit askleo.com 2433. I'm Leo Notenboom. This is askleo.com. Thanks for watching.